I set myself a challenge to find a cheap laptop on eBay. And after lots of searching and lots of lost auctions, I finally managed to find one for only $20. But is it any good? And more importantly, can it run Minecraft? The laptop I received was a HP ProBook 650G1, which was a popular laptop used by businesses and schools back in the day. Probably why I managed to get this for so cheap. However, there are a few things wrong with it. The battery doesn't hold a charge, the bottom cover is missing, and someone scratched a heart into the palm rests. The laptop also didn't come with a charger, something that wasn't clear in the listing. Not to worry though, because I had a Dell laptop charger that was exactly the same connector. So I decided to connect it up, but unfortunately that did not work. The power button was flashing and it showed no signs of life other than that. So I had to order a charger off Amazon and wait until the next day before I could get it working. All right guys, so it's the next day and I've been waiting for Amazon pretty much all day, but they finally come and they've delivered a charger because this laptop did not come with one. And I also ordered a new battery as well while I'm at it. I figured I might as well, two trips in one. We've now got a fully functional laptop. Let me show you. Ta-da! Here it is. Here is the $20 laptop. All working. Batteries charged. And yeah, it's currently running Windows 10. So we'll see how that performs later on. Annoyingly, I don't have bottom Bro. cover for the laptop just yet. Uh, I did order one. Don't laugh at me, but I've actually ordered one. But it's too small. Look, I'll show you. See, I've got a 15-inch laptop. And I'm pretty sure this cover is for a 13-inch laptop. To be honest, I think the open bottom actually helps with air flow so hey i'm not complaining it might even give us some better performance the specs of this computer are okay but not amazing it has an intel core i3 4000m four gigabytes of ddr3 ram and a 128 gigabyte ssd it's currently running windows 10 pro and everything seems to be running fine but yeah so far so good i'm actually pretty impressed by the performance of this laptop i guess that's thanks to the 128 gigabyte ssd Everything's quite fast, everything's quite snappy, and yeah, it's actually quite good to use if you're just to do like general office tasks or whatever stuff, homework. As you can see here, we've got our Core i3 4000M CPU, so we didn't get scammed, we did get what was listed on the listing. We've got 4 gigabytes of RAM, which we might be able to upgrade later on down the line, and we've got Windows 10 Pro, which I think is actually activated for us. Wow, so for $20, Windows key, I mean... It's not too bad really, is it? But yeah, otherwise it's just a standard version of Windows 10. We've got all of this rubbish in the start menu, all of the pre-installed apps that we don't want or need. If we go into the task manager here, I have had a look, of, I've had a little look already. 91% CPU, what's using all of that? Okay, so if we just go into the performance tab, 136 background processes, 1.8 gigabytes of the four gigabytes of RAM. So maybe we won't need an upgrade too soon we've got our intel hd graphics and yeah otherwise it's just yeah a standard install of windows 10 uh we have got quite a lot of hp bloatware that's currently installing itself which i really don't like why why do manufacturers do this seriously i think this here is the driver for the trackpad pointing enhancement but yeah it doesn't look too bad so far so yeah the question is, how well does it run Minecraft? So we're going to start off by creating a world, creative worlds on 1.8.9, which is a popular version of Minecraft. It's quite an old version, but the PvP community really like 1.8.9. So we'll try that out first on this laptop, and then we'll try 1.20, the latest release. All right, here we go. We have got Minecraft running on the $20 laptop. Been pretty easy so far, but how is the performance? Right, straight away, this feels incredibly laggy. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this does not feel good. This hurts. All right, so we've loaded in a little bit and we're getting about 20 to 30 FPS. Not too bad, I suppose, for Intel HD graphics. It's not too bad, actually. Let's go ahead and uh, just set our frame rate like that. Put our render distance to about eight. We'll turn off fancy graphics, put that on fast, turn off smooth lighting, put this on, turn off V-Sync. All right, we're getting 40 FPS. Hmm. Okay, this is gonna... I was hoping that we were gonna get quite a lot on here and then maybe on 1.20 we might stand a chance of running it well. But this is kind of a bit of a letdown, honestly. We're gonna need to do a lot of optimizing to get this running good. Yeah, look at that, 65 FPS. So if we want to get a playable frame rate, we might have to play in its native 1366 by 768 resolution. Okay, this is pretty good. This is pretty respectable. Right, let's see how it runs 1.20. All right, so yeah, as you can see, it's very choppy. 
copy. What is this? I just it's the chunks just aren't even loading. Right, anyway, let's have a look at our F3 men. Oh, 3 FPS. Are you serious right now? That is that is really bad, actually. I know I shouldn't use the F3 menu. Okay. Okay, we're loading in a little bit now. Starting to get a little bit more playable. Maybe about 30 FPS, maybe. I don't know. It's uh this is definitely gonna be a challenge for sure. So it's pretty clear that if we want to get good performance on this laptop, then we're gonna need to optimize it. And if you guys want to optimize your video editing software, then check out our sponsor, One to share Filmora. As a content creator, you understand the struggle of finding good music for your videos. We've all been there, spending countless hours searching for the right track, but fear not, because Wondershare Filmora have got a game-changing new feature called AI Music Generator, which can actually use AI to generate good music for your videos. Let me show you. This AI Music Generator is pretty much just like having your own personal music producer for your videos. You just give it all of the details here, such as the mood, theme, genre, and duration, and it comes up with some really nice tracks every single time that you can use in your videos. So I've just got some footage here. Let's go with happy mood. Okay, we'll go with a normal tempo. We'll have the duration at about two minutes, I would say. You can also change the theme as well here, so we can have it as like a travel style theme. We'll go with gaming, I think, and genre. You know what? We'll go with dance music. Why not? Let's go ahead and press start and see what it comes out with. I like that one a lot. That one's my favorite, I think, so far. So if you find the track that you like, go ahead and select it. Press this download button. It downloads it straight to your computer. And here it is. All you do is just drag and drop it into the timeline. And there you go. Some free music to use for your videos. This is super cool. But that's not all. Not only can Wondershare Filmora generate AI music for your videos, it can also use AI to subtitle your videos and also translate them as well. So I've just got a piece of footage here titles is like on this piece of footage and then what we need to do to get the ai subtitles is just go on here press speech to text then go ahead and press ok i'm currently just talking into my microphone testing out what this sounds like that's actually really good and really fast as well so now to translate this text we just select our subtitle clip here and then go ahead and press this button here. Select the source language, which in my case is English. And we're going to translate this to Spanish. Why not? And boom, that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and check out what it looks like with Spanish subtitles on it. I wonder what Filmora is going to be able to do to subtitle this and whether it's going to be able to translate it as well. So go ahead and download Wondershare Filmora for completely free from the link in the video description. Make sure to go check it out if you're a content creator. And thank you to Wondershare Filmora for sponsoring this video. Right, it's time to get optimizing this laptop. The first thing that I did was I ran the Chris Titus tool, which is simply just a Windows PowerShell script that I do on pretty much all of my computers. So you just copy and paste the code off the website, paste it into PowerShell, and it should start running. I've done lots of videos on the Chris Titus tool before, so I'm just gonna skim through it. I went on the minimal preset and ticked a couple of the advanced tweaks as well. And yeah, this is a really good tool. It can half your background processes, which will allow more resources to be allocated to our games. So it should help to improve our performance. I then press run tweaks and just let it do its thing running in the background. The tool opened up in full screen so I wasn't exactly sure if it was running or not but then I peeked behind it and there was Windows PowerShell working away doing all of the nice tweaks to our system. So yeah that went pretty well although I did get a small error. After that I just unpinned all of the windows on the start menu. I don't think this has any performance impact. It's more of a personal preference kind of thing. Just getting rid of all of this, cleaning it up a bit and then restarting my system System, which is recommended to do after running the Chris Titus tool. As you can see, our background processes are now only 88, which is pretty good going. I also make sure to disable startup apps. And then after this, I had to right click uninstall all of the bloatware that comes pre-installed with Windows. So all of the apps that I don't want or need, just trying to keep it as minimal as possible, only really not uninstalling stuff that doesn't let me or would break certain things. So yeah, just cleaning it up and making sure Windows is in the best state it possible possibly can be if there even is one. Anyway, next up we go into the settings, go into the app section, disable startup apps and all that good stuff. I then went into the gaming section, made sure game modes on but game bars off. Went into the general privacy settings and made sure that they were all on as minimal as possible. Whoever set up this laptop seemed to say yes, yes, yes to everything on the startup so I had to go on all of the privacy things and make sure they were all off. I also turned off background apps as well which is quite important. I then went and tried to grab a Intel HD graphics 
Linux driver for my CPU. It's important you have all the latest drivers for your system, otherwise they'll be running off older versions or even worse, Microsoft equivalent ones. So yeah, I installed the Intel HD graphics control panel and just went through all of the settings there to make sure it was optimized for performance rather than quality. So yeah, we really want to try and get as most as much performance out of this tiny little Intel HD graphics as possible. So yeah, I'm just going through all of the settings here, making sure it's on maximum performance, doing everything I possibly can. Then that reminded me, if I go into the power options, we don't actually have an ultimate performance setting. It's only balanced. So back to the Chris Titus tool, there is actually in the config section a way to disable updates, which I did because I don't want any Windows updates ruining my tweaks. And also you can enable the ultimate performance profile, which I've just done here. Probably not recommended on a laptop, but I'm pretty much only going to be using this always plugged in. After this, I then optimize Windows to adjust for best performance, which makes things look pretty ugly. The fonts don't have a shadow and there's no like animations or anything in Windows. But we're basically trying every trick in the book here to try and get as much performance out of this laptop as possible. After that, I installed MSI Afterburner and Reva Statistics, which a lot of people scream at me in the comments section when I play Minecraft. I show the FPS on the F3 menu. This basically allows me to see the FPS without all of that, so I can get a good idea of what the performance is like. And as you can see here, it's pretty playable. We're getting slightly over 60 fps sometimes a little bit under i then decided to go into full screen and considering the full screen was at 1366 by 768 it did actually appear a lot smoother in full screen and i think i did actually turn down the resolution after that but yeah as you can see here it's quite smooth the video settings are pretty much turned all the way down but it's not too bad we're getting there the performance is okay but we could definitely do with optifine and some more optimized video settings so i went ahead and installed feather client which is what I'm going to be using on this laptop for the latest version, but I thought I may as well use it on 1.8 as well. So I made sure I turned off all of the mods because mods can definitely take up a lot of the performance. Feather Client's also got some nice performance settings, so you can turn off stuff like the menu blur. You can adjust the lazy chunk loading to have it on low, medium, or high. And you can also change the quality of the UI to try and keep that on as low as possible so it doesn't use up as many resources. You can also mess around with stuff like the memory settings like I'm doing here, clear glass, all of this good stuff basically definitely helps our FPS and it also has a handy FPS mod as well. We also have Optifine so we've got so many more video settings that I can mess around with here. Basically turning everything to fast, off or having everything maximized with performance rather than quality basically. Putting on stuff like fast math, fast render and making sure lazy chunk loading's on. It's all looking pretty good. I've done lots of videos on how you can optimize your Minecraft video settings for best performance. So after I did that we were getting pretty respectable performance. It didn't really seem like it made too much difference at first, but it was time to join a Minecraft server and see what the performance was like on there. The next day, I decided to upgrade this laptop as much as I possibly could. I put 8GB of RAM in, which is an upgrade from the original 4GB it came with, and I also noticed that you can get easy access to the CPU through here as well. So I decided to give that a good re-thermal paste. It's always important to do this, especially on a laptop because they get so hot and the thermal paste gets all crusty. The thermal paste is quite crusty, but it's not the worst that I've seen. So I gave it a good clean up with the included alcohol wipes and tissue and then reapplied some Arctic MX5 thermal paste and it was pretty much good to go. And another thing that I noticed as well is that the CPU is actually socketed. So potentially in the future, I could actually upgrade the CPU in this $20 laptop. How cool is that? Right, we're actually on my man club and we're playing with actually good frame rate. Look at that. So yeah, Feather Client and all the Optifine settings has made a real difference here. Let's join a 1v1. We've got lazy chunk loading on, which is a little bit trippy, but it definitely helps our performance. I'm definitely not gonna win this 1v1 because I'm on a trackpad. But look at the performance. Like if I had my keyboard and mouse, I could probably play like this, you know? Decent 150 FPS, not bad at all. Right, so here I am in a super flat world, and we're going to try and get the highest FPS possible on this laptop. Okay, we're getting 300 FPS. Not too bad. I was getting a lot more earlier, but for some reason it's not doing it now. What about if we look up? Okay, here we go. 500 FPS. What if we zoom in? Oh, it's actually going down. Right, let's just do the quick F1 trick real quick. 600 FPS. This is crazy. Don't think we're going to be able to get 1000 FPS on this laptop. I've tried literally everything I possibly can. But still, this is really respectable performance. This feels so smooth. I could quite easily play on this laptop now. So 
So it's clear we're on a pretty good track, but there's one version of Minecraft that I really want to try and optimize and get running on this laptop. And that is the latest version of Minecraft 1.20.4. Now 1.20.4 is probably going to be the most demanding version of Minecraft yet. However, there are a lot of FPS and performance optimizing mods that you can use alongside sodium and fabric to get to optimize your game really well. A lot of people always say, why do you only play 1.8.9? Why don't you play the latest version and try and optimize that? Well, I've listened to you guys and I'm currently about to launch 1.20.4 fabric alongside a lot, and I mean a lot, of FPS boosting mods. All right, that is much better. 250 FPS on Minecraft 1.20.4. What happens if we look down? Can we get any better FPS here? No, it's still into about 200. What about in the sky? 300. Let's go. Yeah, if you're wondering what kind of video settings I'm using, I'll just go ahead and show you right here. So obviously we've got sodium on and uh, yeah, these are pretty much the settings. I've pretty much gone through everything. I do quite like sodium. You can just hover over something and it'll tell you the performance impact and what it does. On, for example, a 1.20 server, we're getting a really playable frame rate, to be honest. We're over 60 FPS pretty much wherever we go. And yeah, I could definitely play on here, honestly. It's uh, quite smooth. Right, so we've just joined a 1v1 here. I'm definitely going to lose this because I'm on a trackpad right now. But yeah, as you can see, if I had a keyboard and mouse, I could probably play like this, to be honest. I'm not the best at latest version PvP. In fact, my trackpad just doesn't even want to work. Thank you. Yes. I mean, we managed to get one hit on him at least. Why can't I hit this guy? Yeah, this is not going well. What about if I try and shoot him? Oh, I'll drop my axe. I'm so bad at this. But yeah, the point is, the FPS is good. It's playable. We've successfully optimized 1.20. Let's go. So how well does it run just a regular single player world on 1.20? I'm sure that's what a lot of people do on the latest version. They play single player, SMP, and various mod packs and that kind of stuff. Well, once you load in, it is a little bit laggy when it renders in new chunks. As you can see, our FPS is spiking all over the place. But once it's all loaded in your fps does go back up to a kind of playable frame rate maybe not it's a little bit i don't know i don't get this one minute you're on like 30 fps next minute you're on 10 and now you're on 200 it's uh it fluctuates a lot i'll definitely tell you that i mean yeah there's lots of big caves and lots of stuff in the game in the latest version but i suppose once you're caving the fps is quite good it's not much to render in so yeah you probably could play like this it's just very annoying the fluctuations in fps but we might be able to smooth that out maybe we'll see yeah look at that 300 FPS just in single player 1.20. Yeah, I think we've done pretty good things with this laptop. So there we have it. That is how I optimized a $20 laptop that I bought off of eBay. I'd say, to be honest, this isn't a bad purchase. I could have done a lot worse than this. And the performance that we managed to get from going from just under 30 FPS to over 600 in some cases, even getting the latest version running pretty well on here, I'm pretty happy with what we've managed to achieve. Let me know in the comments section down below what you want to see me do with this laptop. I might install a custom operating system on here, maybe get Linux, maybe do a CPU upgrade and add an M.2 SSD. I don't know, we'll have to see. But let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys very much for watching. And if you want to check out my last video, I'll leave it on screen right now.